This week's video is the story of how this giant hole in my roof came to be. This was a month-long beast of a project that also turned into a beast of a video, so buckle up and skip about five minutes if you don't want to listen to me rambling. Things are not going well. With my mediocre editing skills, I was unable to get this video under 30 minutes long. If we remember to measure twice, cut once. So I hope you enjoy at least some of it. We're gonna go for it. It's so bright and sunny in here now. I love it. Okay, so for this one, we have to go way back to when I first bought the bus. Before I did anything to the bus, the height from floor to ceiling right in the very center of the bus at its tallest point was six feet. Obviously that's perfectly comfortable for me. So there's plenty of room for me to stand in the center. And I can even stand all the way to the edge, just barely without having to duck or anything. Most of my friends and family are also not really that tall. So this bus is mostly fine height-wise for me, but for even like a tall-ish person, it's just not a comfortable place to be. A lot of people do like full roof raises and I never considered that, not once. From the day I bought the bus, I knew that's not something I wanted to do. Because A, that seemed like it would be really hard and time consuming. B, I figured it would be really expensive. And C, I don't even really like how buses look once they've got a roof raise. I like it when school bus tiny homes really look like school buses. That's the same reason I kept all my windows. So in my mind, my bus is a little short. That's just the way it is. That's how I'm keeping it. Any tall people who want to hang out with me in here are going to have to deal with that. <laughs> but then at some point, I happened upon this video from Sean and Ash. And in the video that I saw, they got like an old truck camper shell thing and mounted it on their roof to create like this really tall, big skylight. And it's only in one little area, but it looks so good from the inside. It makes such a big difference. And I got to thinking about it and kind of realized that the kitchen area is really where the majority of the standing is going to happen in the bus, I think. The other rooms are kind of more designed for sitting or laying down anyway. So I got to thinking that having just a little bit more headspace just in the kitchen area probably go a long way towards making this a more comfortable space for a tall person. I don't know who's going to want to be here spending time with me. I also don't know, like I think I've said it before, I kind of bought this bus on a whim. I am really not that sure how much time I'm going to want to spend in the bus, living in the bus, or even owning the bus to be totally honest. Like maybe I'll live here for five days, maybe I'll live here for five years, I don't know. So the whole kitchen skylight roof raise idea started to seem like a very worthwhile idea. And at first I thought maybe I would just copy that whole truck shell camper thing exactly. I wasn't entirely sold on it. It just seemed like maybe that sticks up a little bit further than I really want or need it to. So then I thought, well, maybe I should just add a regular skylight, just really big. I actually don't remember what exactly turned me off of that idea. I think maybe it was the cost and I think that the idea that I had in my head was like a lot longer than this. Like I don't know if I forgot how big my kitchen area was or what. The skylights I was looking up were like twice as long as this one that I've ended up with. Couldn't really find a skylight that big and if I could it was insanely expensive. So then I started doing some more digging and I found a few people with schoolies who made their own skylights. And I loved them. I thought these are so great. They look so nice and they're custom and they're cheap and they look really nice. And I sent the videos and stuff that I found to my brother and he was like, mm, I don't really like that design. It seems like it might tend to leak a little bit. Just for some background on my brother, he is an engineer and he used to work at this like water engineering place. So I think he's a little bit more picky than your average person about leaks. Definitely more picky than me. But anyway, all of this thinking and figuring out and pondering has taken place over I don't even know how many weeks. And eventually I just started to feel like I was just going in circles, not making any decisions. And so finally I was just like, you know what? This is not a priority. It's fine as is. If I decide I want to do this later, I can add it later. You know, once the things that are important and that matter are finished. I pretty much scrapped the idea and more or less forgot about it. Then if we fast forward to a few months ago, I got the insulation done. I had bought the cedar boards for my ceiling. I was kind of starting to think about all the projects that were coming up. The idea of this skylight came back to my mind. What it came down to was I was imagining putting up all this beautiful, expensive ceiling material that I had bought and then just immediately destroying it. I was figuring even if I was careful and tried to just like cut nicely through it, I was gonna end up destroying some amount of my hard work if I did that. And so I decided, you know what, if I'm gonna do this, I need to just make a decision and get it done. So I asked my brother one more time, like, what do you think about this? Can I do it? Should I do it? And his response was, I think that if you're gonna do that, you should have done it before the spray foam. <laughs> like, yeah, duh, obviously, that's what I should have done. But the spray foam's done, it is what it is, we are where we are. <laughs> so can I do it or not? And he said, yeah, we could do it. And luckily, my brother Philip really likes projects like this and he's good at them. So he told me that he could design a super cool skylight for me and we could install it. And he fully delivered on that. I ended up with this very beautiful addition. So 
that's how this all started. Now they have the backstory. Let's go back to Christmas weekend 2021, which was the first of several weekends that we spent actually making this happen. First thing we did was pick up some of the metal that he had gotten and head to his work. We were able to use that shop and all the equipment and stuff because it was the weekend, nobody was there. And my brother said that, that our goal that day was pretty much just to make two big squares out of metal. Glass is 48 by 48. Uh -huh. So right now we're making a frame that sits one inch inside of it all the way around. So we're going to make a metal frame that's 46 by 46 with mitered corners. We need to make eight of them. Okay. And we're going to weld them together into two squares. We used this big fancy metal cutting machine, which was so quiet. I don't, I didn't know that metal cutting could be that quiet and we cut the big, giant, long metal pieces into shorter metal pieces with 45 degree angles. Or, you know, Philip did that while I stood around with the camera. Then we use the grinder to take off the sharp edges. If you guys have been around for a while, you know that I have kind of a history with the grinder, meaning that I'm terrified of it. And in the past, I have 100% of the time either failed or refused to try it when push came to shove. This time I did it. And big surprise, it wasn't that bad. So yeah, this was so long ago now that I don't remember the specifics, but there was some grinding and some welding and some using math in ways that I had forgotten math could be used. So since I don't really have a good square, I'm gonna use math. Oh. I was really going back to eighth grade geometry with that one. By the way, watching this video back and also just in general, it's so weird whenever I remember that this is my little brother who, when he was a freshman and I was a senior, I had to help him with his math homework. He'll probably deny that, but that's what happened. I was a smart one, he was the troublemaker. Oh, how things have changed. Anyway, like I said, lots of grinding, lots of welding. I even tried my hand at welding and it was kind of fun. I'm sure I would have hated it if I didn't have somebody guiding me and holding my hand throughout the whole process, but I liked it, I enjoyed it. This is another one of those weird moments where I'm just like hit with this realization that if you had told me like a year or two ago that I would ever even try welding, let alone enjoy it, I would have been absolutely certain that you're full of shit. But here we are. I wasn't great at it, of course. There's a lot of coaching and correcting of mistakes. So then we ground down the weld so that the whole thing would be smooth, and then Philip set me to work on grinding while he did some more welding. In the end, we made some pretty good progress that day, and I felt like I learned a good amount. I think that was pretty much all we did that day. Just made two big squares and then added little tabby attachment point thingies to one of them for the acrylic to attach to. You'll see what I'm talking about eventually. <laughs> And then Philip just explained to me what the plan was going forward because at this point I really didn't even know what we were doing. I was just following him blindly. It turns out that welding isn't that hard and grinding isn't that scary. This frame right here is going to hold plexiglass acrylic. This will be the closed position. There will be a piece of leather stripping right here to seal it. And then you'll be able to open it up like this to get some fresh air and we'll probably put some gas shocks on it to help open it and keep it held open. After that we called it a day and put the project on hold until just a couple weeks ago. Oh, it's 7.30 on a Sunday morning. I am heading south once again to my brother's house to work on the skylight again. Today we're going to put a few more things together on it. I think it's going to be quicker and easier than last time. I hope so because I am super tired. I left Gray in there because he's so cute and I'm obsessed with him. He didn't actually help with the skylight. But this day did turn out to be easy just like I had hoped. All we really did was drill holes in the aforementioned tabby thingies. 
from the last time. And I learned about and used a center punch for the first time ever, which was cool. You have to push it in. Pretty hard. And then click it? No. It oh, it does it itself? itself. Uh. You just keep pushing down. And you don't click. Uh. Really, the amount of just very simple and useful tools that exist that I just don't have any idea about has been really mind-blowing already. I'm sure that I've only just scratched the surface of that. So we did that all the way around, drilled holes, and then tapped them? It's a tap, right? The thing that puts threads into the metal? Yet another good example of a very simple and very useful tool that I didn't know about. Then we brought the acrylic out so that we could drill holes in that as well to sort of line it up with the metal. So the edge of this? So basically the edge of the tap should be the edge of close. Philip explained to me a little bit more about what exactly we were doing and why I should be feeling very secure about the whole project. This thing's like, I'm building it as if basically what I've done with acrylic, we've made it 100% watertight to the point where I can fill it with water. Uh-huh. So hopefully, this can not get water blown into it. I think I'm going pretty overkill. And I was also starting to realize just how heavy this thing was going to be and wondering how we were going to lift it 10 feet into the air. How are we going to get up there in the first place? There's a crane up there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is drill down through the holes that we already made into the acrylic so all the holes line up. Okay. So yeah, we drilled holes through the metal into the acrylic made sure that we got all the holes straight and lined up and put bolts through all of them just to make sure that everything was in place the way it should be. And then we took all the bolts straight back out. Oh, and I used a router. Oh, I learned so much new stuff in this project, huh? I loved the router. I actually had already wanted, I'd been wanting a router for absolutely no reason. I don't even know why. And now that I've used one, I still want one. <laughs> and we just use that to like round off the sharp edges of the acrylic. And that was it. All done. All done. That wasn't so bad. Oh, I didn't think it would be. I didn't think it would take a long time, but it went really well. Yeah. Everything went really, worked really well for us. So I'm very pleased. <laughs> Sweet. We just cleaned up and I headed home. Well, that went really, really smoothly. Everything turned out really well. And it was easy and it didn't take too long. It was kind of fun. The router's fun. I'm starting to get excited about this. I've been really nervous about it. I'm still nervous about it because I am cutting a giant hole in the top of my bus. But yeah, I'm excited. I will see you in a week when it's go time. Saturday morning, way too early for how late I stayed out last night. But today is the day. I think we're gonna start putting the skylight in and I'm terrified. I'm driving my brother's truck because he's driving the bus because I think my oil leak is back, which is a real bummer, but it's too much to do today to waste my time getting bummed about that. So we're going to go for it. Okay. For this next part of the story, as it was happening, I actually decided that I was just going to leave it out of the video entirely. I figured I'd be getting some obnoxious comments about it and I just kind of decided I'd rather not. <laughs> But then I got to thinking about how the original point of me making these videos was to have something to look back on of this whole insane period of my life. And I don't really want to leave like funny important stuff out because of rude internet strangers. I'm not making these videos for them, so why should I be catering to them with the editing? So I'm putting the story in. <laughs> Things are not going well. We just pulled over and I went to see what happened and my brother is covered in oil. It like started spraying out somewhere. <laughs> well, this is serious and I don't know I'm laughing, but it's, it's also funny. <laughs> Long story short, the day before when I started driving to get the bus down to my brother's house, I realized that the oil was really low, so I stopped at the gas station to add some. 
And then I just kept adding more and more oil because I couldn't see the level going up. And I drove down to my brother's house and the next morning when I went out to check the oil, it was like all over the floor of the driver's seat area, which was so weird. So that's why my brother decided that I would drive his truck and he would drive the bus down to his work. He took that whole cover thing off so that hopefully he could kind of see what was going on while he was driving. And then before we really even got out of his neighborhood, we started going down a steep hill and the oil just like sprayed out all over him, head to toe. It was on the ceiling. It was everywhere. Right now I'm going downhill and the oil um, again, and of course, I don't know what forward on whatever. All right, he's talking to his super smart mechanic friend on the phone. I don't know what we're gonna do or how terrible this is. Upon further inspection, Philip discovered that I had not been looking at the oil level. I had been looking at the transmission fluid. And I ended up overfilling the oil by three gallons. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to hear it, okay? I'm already embarrassed about it. You don't have to tell me. To be clear, I was adding oil to where the oil goes, not to where the transmission fluid goes, luckily. All right, well, we've got everything figured out and I think we're ready to go and nothing was terribly wrong. I just made a really dumb mistake. <laughs> on a positive note, I had, I happened to have this little oil extractor pump thingy on me. Getting the extra oil out wasn't very hard and the whole thing turned out to be way less of a big deal than it seemed like it was going to be. The bad news is it's 11 a.m. already. It's gonna be probably noon by the time we get to the shop where we're working on this. We were planning on this taking all day today and tomorrow, so all weekend. And now we've wasted a quarter of the time without even having gotten it to the shop yet. <laughs> Just really hoping that we can actually manage to pull this off now. We can't afford any more big mistakes, I don't think. Once we finally got to the shop, we got right down to business and started cutting a big hole in the roof. We started out by measuring for the center of the roof and just kind of deciding on the exact placement. So now what are we doing? Okay, right, so now I'm just gonna sit here and think about what our lives are for a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> That divided by two is 21 and a half. Three quarter? What was the original number? 43 and a half, I think. Once we had made all of our calculations and marked out our plan, we had no more excuses not to just dig in, which was scary. Time, time to cut it. Time to cut it. <sighs> scary. I trust my brother, but this was just, it was a really big hole. It was scary. So first he took the grinder to the very top layer of metal and then sawed through the insulation and the other stuff in there. We did cut through and partially move one of the metal support rib thingies. I'm sure there will be a couple of people who take issue with that. But all I have to say about that is that Philip is fully qualified to be doing this kind of stuff. We got interrupted a couple of times by Philip's co-workers. What are you building? Who would wander into the shop and ask what we were doing. Oh, well, my sister got ambitious and bought a school bus. Yeah, so now I got hooked into it. Yeah. <laughs> and without fail, Phil took every opportunity to tell these people about my colossal mistake that I had just made and just otherwise throw me under the bus in any way he could to these strangers. Trying to act like you aren't the one who talked me into this purchase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the one who had the idea. <sighs> Brothers, am I right? Okay. So, I'm gonna have to have you stand and hold your hands up in the air right here. Okay. It could have just fallen on my head. I said hang on. Well, the piece isn't just gonna hang <laughs> on. was, do I hate this? Why does that make it feel so much shorter in here? I don't know. Am I going to regret this actually? Nah, this is going to be nice. I feel like I didn't notice how short the ceiling was. Maybe this will just highlight that. Make everything else seem shorter instead of seeing this one taller. Yeah. It just initially felt really like 
You know, the ceiling height didn't bother me before. I'm not tall enough for it to bother me. But somehow cutting out that chunk of ceiling, and I, th I think especially because we cut so far out to the sides where the ceiling was lower, once that chunk was gone, it just felt like I was just standing in the bus looking out over the roof with my head poking out. Obviously it wasn't, but that's what it felt like. Well, that went good, I think. <laughs> if we remember to measure twice, cut once. No, we measured once, cut once. We also did all the math in our brains, too. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, at that point, there was really no turning back. So there was no point in me taking any time to decide whether I hated it or not. Oh, your taste was pretty accurate. This is weird. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> okay, now that we have that down, we actually need to shift gears for a second. To what? Building on the skylight frame again. Okay. We broke out the hinges and decided how to attach those. By the way, I've been saying we a lot, and I feel like I'm probably going to continue oh. saying we, but we all understand that I was mostly just the cameraman here. Okay, we're going to have to make some little mounts for these. Philip made some little pieces to stick the hinges on with, burnt himself a little in the process. and welded the pieces into place. He got everything all attached and put together and then we tested it to make sure that the hinges would actually work properly. Oh, perfect, right? So far, so perfect. Nice. Now what? Put it in. Put it on top? Need to go up there and kind of see where it's gonna sit see what type of mounting brackets and stuff we need to build that go into the bus. So there's still a lot left to do, but I think it can go up. Okay, this is where things get exciting because Philip then broke out like the giant version of one of those like grabby claw machines at restaurants so that we could hoist the frame up onto the roof. This is where I started to doubt the one single decision that I had made in this whole project, which was how high we were going to raise the whole structure above the original roof. Do you think that's tall enough? Like, do you think it adds enough headspace to be worth going all this work? I guess we could uh, feel it out for a minute. Like I said, I trust my brother. I have little to no problem following his plans, even when it involves cutting a 4x4 four four hole in my roof before we even decided exactly how we're going to fix it. I do not trust myself. I started to worry that we weren't raising it enough and that it wasn't going to make enough of a difference to make all this work that we were doing worthwhile. The top of my hand is 7 feet, so you're talking like a 6 and a half foot or better here, and then probably, you know, 6 or whatever over there. Here, I mean, with the wood, you're talking 70 and a half inches versus 80, pretty much. Oh, okay. You're gaining eight inches of headspace right there. Okay. And six Couple inches less, right yeah. there. Okay. All right, yeah, that seems good. You sure. Right now is the time to change if you're uh, wanting to change. This is gonna be sweet. It's gonna be really, really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're gonna supposedly get this all done in one more day. Why? I don't know, it just feels like a lot. <laughs> it's the worst part's over. Oh, really? I don't know, I think. What, what was the worst part? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the worst part isn't over. We decided that the height that I had chosen was just fine and got back to it. At this point, Philip cut some pieces of metal to attach to the frame of the bus that would then support the skylight frame. And then he hauled this whole ass thing up into the air so that we could weld them in. And we brought the frame up. I was caught up in your landscape. Please tell me. Now what am I supposed to do? 
Nice. Oh yeah, it's pretty tall. It's pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. Now I just gotta try to take my ground clamp. Oh, this seems like a terrible idea. Yeah, but the alternative would be walking out that door and grabbing it. So I'm not about to. Do that. Oh, why don't I just grab it? <laughs> I could have just grabbed that. I know. And that was pretty much it for that day. How much did we accomplish compared to what you thought we would accomplish before the mishap this morning? Um, probably about as much. Oh. This is where I finally got to attempt to be helpful in making some templates. You're gonna be making some templates. Okay. For the pieces of metal that we were going to use to frame the frame. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, basically you're just gonna make a template that fits each one. These ones will be pretty much straight. Philip kind of taught me the basic concept of scribing, which is good because I'm gonna have to do that later for this curved roof. And I really didn't know how it worked at all. The other ones are gonna be more time consuming because you'll have to go up there. And our biggest gap is like two inches. So we need like a two inch spacer. We choose our biggest gap, set a spacer, or somehow make our pen offset that same space. Uh. And then we just go and draw. It'll take this whole amount out of here and it'll take none right there. And then you're left with that shape. It was nice to feel like I was finally helping, but it also was kind of hard. And I was just kind of propping my Sharpie up on a scrap of two by four. So it wasn't the easiest or smoothest process. Is this what it should look like? But yeah, the scribing for this project was going even worse than I had expected. Um, I'm terrible at this. Why? I don't know. Wait, I think I got one. Nice. How perfect does it have to be? We decided that I had done good enough. I made a few more pieces for the other sides of the skylight, and we hauled out a big piece of metal. Meanwhile, while I was struggling to cut up pieces of cardboard, Philip welded like an entire like mini roof onto the top frame piece. I traced my templates out into the metal, and Philip cut them out with this magical thingy that is apparently called a plasma cutter. And I cannot describe to you how nervous I was about them fitting. How's it look? Does it look promising or unpromising? Like, Philip was running around like a madman, making all this cool stuff from scratch for my bus. All the while, I was mostly just sitting around, occasionally pointing a camera in his face. I was so terrified that the one thing he'd asked me to do for my own project was going to be a terrible failure. But luckily I was able to breathe a sigh of relief because they were good enough. So Philip prepped everything for welding and started to weld. And this is where we hit our first real snag in this whole project because the pieces we had cut weren't exactly perfect, and the existing metal of the roof was pretty thin, so I guess as he was trying to make a good watertight weld, it was warping a lot and just like not really working very well. So we changed plans and he welded the pieces into place but didn't actually like seal them. We decided to just use a different sealant for that part. The attempted welding did take quite a bit of time though, so we ran out of time, and that was Sunday night, so our weekend was over, and the skylight still wasn't done. So we boarded it up and took the bus and headed back to my brother's house. Well, it's nice while it lasted. Yeah, it's a nice thought, but it just wasn't meant to be. The next day was a Monday, so Philip had to go to work, but luckily I am not a real adult. So I was able to get some painting done during the day, and then we headed back out to put the final pieces together at 9 p.m. that night. Okay, am I helping with this or just staying out of the way? Which one do you want to do? Well, I'll help if I can, but I don't want to just get more in the way. You're not going to ever let go of it completely? No, I'm never going to hand it to you, but whatever weight you can take away from me would be okay. less I have to carry out. We put the glass into place. Wow, what a treacherous job. And then marked on the paper coating where it would be making contact with the metal frame. Oh, wow, I love it. I know, I was gonna say, can we close this while we work on it? <laughs> okay. I at the same thought, I'm like, I should just pull this shut real <laughs> My brother is very meticulous, and I am not, and if I had been doing this on my own, I for sure would have just peeled back all the paper completely and immediately, but that's not how we did it. 
We brought the glass back in and carefully peeled back the paper. Okay, now silicone? Yeah. Okay. Then we went back to the roof to put a bead of silicone between the frame and the glass and to make a game plan of how to get the glass onto the frame without smearing the silicone around. So when we set this down, it has to be in the right location when we set it down. Uh-huh. So we can't set it down and slide it around. Okay. So I'll hand it across to you. Can't stress how important it is. Do yeah. not set it down. Okay, I won't. Do not let it touch the silicone until we're certain that it's where we want it to be. Okay. Well, I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> There's a moment, right as we were about to place it, and when Philip changed his mind, what? Okay, oh, I... And just took the glass back and just like heaved it up above his head with both hands. Do you got it? Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. While standing on top of a bus that was also parked on a pretty steep hill, there was not a doubt in my mind that he was about to just tumble, skylight in hand, head first off the bus and down the cliff. I'm pull off the roof. Uh -huh. I'm panicking. Not even falling off the roof. Oh, that was just scary. That was just a strain of strength, not balance. Well, it just it was really scary. Why? I don't know. My heart was racing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I about just died right there, but that didn't happen. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, coming back to you. Okay. Okay, you got it. Yeah. In this exact moment, right when we were about to place the very last piece of this ginormous project, was when my camera timed out and stopped recording. I mean, it's not that big of a deal because I think with the lighting and the angle we were working with, it wouldn't have been that exciting of a clip anyway. So just believe me when I tell you that the moment in real life was very exciting. And then all that was left was to screw all the bolts back in, and then we were done. Yeah, I'm so happy. It's a school, a cool start. <laughs> I almost called it a school <laughs> skylight. Yeah, it's a done skylight. Well, not completely done. There are some finishing touches that still need to be put into place. Ish. It's done-ish. Yeah, done enough. <laughs> done enough to no longer be weighing on either of us. But we were done with all the structural stuff, all the welding, and in fact, all the stuff that I really needed help with. So at this point, I was able to drive the bus back home to keep working on it on my own. Honestly, for as little planning as I put into the frame, Uh huh. Little for me, like I put a lot of thought into it, uh -huh. but I didn't draw out the details or see how all the details would work with each other. Yeah. It turned out really good. Good. I'm happy with it. Oh, I love it. It looks so good. Which brings us to earlier this morning. I did some more painting. I added some weather strip stuff and I peeled back the rest of the protective paper. This is the moment I've been waiting for. It's gonna be super satisfying. <laughs> okay, that was much less easy and less satisfying than I wanted it to be. Uh, hopefully the inside one will be better. Grand reveal. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, I love it. And now I have this. I'm so happy with it. I gotta say, like, I feel like I was looking back at the video clips while I was editing, and I feel like on camera, it seems very underwhelming. Like, it looks like the tiniest of difference, but it, it really is so nice. Like, I can reach all the way. I can put my arm straight up now here to the top. It really is so much more open and nice. It, it does make a, a really big difference in person, and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. It's obviously not totally done, so when I show you like the close-up shots, don't worry that it's not totally painted or insulated or whatever else, because it, it does still need some more work. The main thing is that it's done, and it turned out really well, and things that could have gone badly didn't. And now I'm ready to get to work on my ceiling, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I guess that's all there really is. Hopefully next time you guys see me, I will have a ceiling.